Corporation case number R period R period till the 385 till the 460 till the 312 colon U period S period. Dry dock treaty number colon R period R period till the 294 till the 568 till the 221 colon U period S period. Global banking constitution and lease number R period R period till the 023 till the 986 till the 635 colon U period S period. I am Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould, Postmaster General, Commander in Chief, and Muster Master at the Secretary of the Navy's Office at the Pentagon. On February 20th, 2003, William Ball, on behalf of Hansford T. Johnson, Secretary of the Navy, signed a lease contract for the Title IV Sections 1, 2, and 3 flag. Since I am the owner and the bearer of the flag, the Title IV Sections 1, 2, and 3 flag, which I have the copyrights to on August 12, 1999, I am now authorizing the terms of the contract for the United States Department of Navy's office. The United States Department of Navy's office will no longer have authorization to use the Title IV Sections 1, 2, and 3 flag further than 300 miles off the land mass of the coastal lines of the North American continent that includes the East Coast, the West Coast, Alaska coastlines. I'm going to cut that down to the perimeter of 100 miles, as well as Hawaii. You will not have authorization to use the Title IV flag on your ships, which is my flag, to be flown anywhere further in Hawaii than 300 miles as well, as well as the holdings of the Virgin Islands, Guam and Puerto Rico, also 300 miles for comfort zone from the land masses there. Because you have signed the lease with me and I am the lease holder, these are the terms to use the Title IV flag on your ships, which means the Department of Navy does not have authorization to use the Title IV flag, sections one, two, and three, on their ships further than 300 miles off our coastlines. What this means is if you want to fly the Title IV Sections 1, 2, and 3 flags on your ships, which is my flag, then the ships need to come back from their locations globally and come within the boundary lines that I have set the perimeters on. As the owner of the Title IV Sections 1, 2, and 3 flag, I am not authorizing the flag to be flown in war theaters. I do not authorize the Navy to take my flag and go to war. As we were learning about the construct of contract, it came down to the foundation of the flag because the bearer and the owner of the flag also ha allows subcontractors or what they would call federal contractors to board that, the terms of that flag. But the flag of our country was wrapped up in a bankruptcy and the bankruptcy ended in 1999. Benjamin Franklin was a French attorney working for the English Crown as a secret agent to capture the United States of America. In 1789, the Constitution of the United States of America was drafted, which was a bankruptcy trust putting the United States of America into a 70-year international bankruptcy for $3 million. Now, the, the dollars were in the form of the uh, Bank of England had lent had picked up the note through the Rothschild family. So that then turned the United States into a international bankruptcy corporation. The Constitution of the United States of America was written in an adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun, pronoun, adverb, verb, style of grammar. This is called parse. And the parse is what parts of words are like the word international. I-N means no, T-E-R is terra, nation is people, A-L is contract. So our, the English language made parse words and then it, excuse the expression, bastardized them. The is an adverb modifying declaration, D-E is no, Claire is speak, at is contract, I-O-N is contract. Of is an adverb, now making Independence, in is no, D is no, pen is right, ANS is contract. 
So he said, you will not write contract and you will not read contract. And then he wrote, we the people. We was a pronoun, the is an adverb, making people a verb. So he went ahead and he made the, the people of America into fictions. You can either be a pronoun, nothing, which is a dead entity called nom de guerre or sodium, or you could be a verb, which was a condition of an illusion fiction. What David and I did is we had filed for copyrights on that flag on the terms of the grammar so now that if a federal contractor does come in, they would have to comply with the terms of the syntax to create a now space performance for the terms of the contract. I got myself in position so when the bankruptcy ended that I would be the man with the flag standing there with the postal construct in place as the treasurer, postmaster, bank banker. What this means is, is that those who choose to come in contract with the Title IV flag must come through the correct grammar of my construct that must have my thumbprint and autograph on the contract to make it valid so they could take the terms of their corporation and put it into free venture capitalist. We applied to the United Nations to be an independent country because the condition of quantum language in a world of eight million fiction people's communication skills was so unique that the 200 members of the United Nations voted to have us have our own country. We had a bank charter, we had a constitution all written in quantum language, we had a bank with gold, we had our, all of our treaties in place with the United States of America, Department of Justice. We sued the United States for the flag of the United States under Title IV, Section 1, 2, and 3. Now we did that on the 25th of July, 1999. And when we did that, we challenged the United States Congress, Senate, Legislature, and Supreme Court to bring forth their correct parse syntax grammar, sentence structure, copyrights of the flag of America. They couldn't do it. They couldn't even produce an oath of office that was written in the correct parse syntax grammar. And on the 12th of August, 1999, the United Nations voted that both Russell and I were independent, sovereign individuals with a flag. We've captured the flag with the correct parse syntax grammar. We had our own bank. We had our own constitution. We had our own trust. We had treaties with other countries. David and I rewrote that construct on August 12, 1999 at the United Nations. But when the United, we had to wait till the United States came out of bankruptcy in 1999 to file it at the post office in Washington, D.C. However, because of David's commitments to the people that he was in joinder with, who I refused to be in joinder with, David could not go on that contract to go into Washington, D.C. To claim the flag so he vacated his position as a ship owner and bearer of the flag in the District of Columbia, Washington DC and the Pentagon. And so this is where I came in because of what we had studied of in contract law to make claim and control the federal contracting style of the terms of the flag. Good morning. I'm Sergeant Robert Horton, United States Army Special Operations. I was a Psychological Operations Specialist from 1999 to 2012, and I'm also a son of the American Revolution. Now everyone is wondering about this Russell J. Gould and David Wynn Miller story, and everybody wants to know what in the world is going on with that. What does it mean, right? Okay, but to understand what it means, you have to understand what's going on on planet Earth that you all need to be made aware of so you can understand what it is these guys are talking about, okay? So I'm going to go back to the beginning. This is a very old Masonic system that's operating here on planet Earth, and it is all based upon shipping and postal wars. We took a look at how all this worked. Uh, it ran back to the three international bankruptcies, like I said, and um, the third and final international bankruptcy came to an end in 1999. And when that happened, the post office that Great Britain had opened up in, in the enclave of Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia, had to close down. He had to, the king had to vacate the position, and, and the trustee for the, the bankruptcy had always been the President of the United States. He was the United States. He was the administrator for the bankruptcy, always has been. 
Well, with the end of the third and final international bankruptcy, the post office was closed down and so we no longer needed a trustee because there was no more bankruptcy. But that was the long run warfare, long range warfare plan of Great Britain was to use the IMF and the World Bank because they knew we weren't going to be able to pay back the interest that Abraham Lincoln had incurred by borrowing the money from the IMF in the first place. And with the, third, the end of the third and final international bankruptcy, the king would step in, pay the debt to the IMF and the World Bank off, and capture the United States back again as part of Great Britain. And we'd all become peasants and serfs again. But the post office had closed down, and he had to vacate. Well, during that time that he had to vacate, there was 18 days there that that post office was vacant. And during that time, uh, Russell hyphen J full colon Gould and full colon Russell, I'm sorry, full colon David hyphen Wynn full colon Miller had seen this whole thing coming. They had been studying the bankruptcies. These guys were great at it. They understood the courts and the ports. And they understood that the, the ports, the neutral ports were the courts. And with that, uh, Russell, understanding what was about to take place here, ran up to the United or ran up to uh, the Pentagon and asked the Pentagon if they had a copyright and patent on the Title IV flag for the United States, uh, the Title IV flag. And of course the Pentagon told him no one's ever asked us that before, Russ, and he said it doesn't matter anyway because the grammar on the contract was all grammar fraud. I've syntacked it and disqualified it and my country's about to be captured and as an American I have the right to protect my flag and my nation against all enemies foreign and domestic and this was a domestic takeover. So he captures the flag, takes off to the United Nations, legs in at the United Nations, and when the United Nations said, okay, but all the land on planet Earth is, is taken up, Russ, what land do you choose? He said, well, we choose the land of the courts during the, t the time of the contract. And of course, with that, that gave them the most powerful, the highest and most powerful court on planet Earth. He turns around and during that 18 day vacancy, he legs back in as postmaster general here for the United States and keeps the continuance of the evidence for the post office open to allow commerce to still be conducted, but under his authority, not under Great Britain's any longer. So he had just seceded Great Britain as the sovereign because he was given sovereignty status by the United Nations to, that allowed him to authorize the conduction of all commerce and, and the continuance of that commerce here in the United States. And now you gotta, we took a big look at that and we were like, holy cow. So the Navy's sitting in foreign ports around the world. The, the, the Florida Chads, during the 1999 Florida Chads, the United States ceased to exist for 90 days. It was done. But there was an 18 day period in there where the post office was closed down. There was no longer a president. There was no longer a need for a middleman or a trustee anymore. So the Navy's sitting in foreign ports around the world with no country and Russ had just taken the flag and they have no flag. So they're sitting in foreign ports around the world in warships. And I'm sure all the weapons were like, what nation are you guys from? And where's your flag at? And when we went through the presidential paperwork and the congressional record, this is all chronicled in the congressional record and the presidential paperwork that we had ran across for that day that we had found with what happened was that Bill Clinton was halfway around the world in Kosovo with the National Security Council at 9 a.m. in the morning, he got a phone call from here in the United States telling him that the Title IV flag had just been captured by Full Colon Russell, Hyphen J, Full Colon Gould, and Full Colon David, Hyphen Wayne, Full Colon Miller. And it was now their new flag. They had just saved the United States from a surrender and takeover of Great Britain, this orchestrated long range warfare attack that these guys had spent 200 years orchestrating had been stopped in its tracks by these guys. So the Navy immediately signed on with Russ in 2003 and were like, you're the new sovereign for the country. You've got the flag. You saved the United States from surrender and takeover. Outstanding. No one's ever done that. And he legged in with them and uh, leased the flag to the Navy so the Navy could continue to conduct its commerce, its, its shipment, because the Navy's all shipping. So they were able to ship themselves around the world and continue to protect the United States in a defensive posture or offensively should, should uh, they need to move to an offensive posture. Um, Russell J. Gould had become, quietly become, the, the new, we call him commander in chief of the North American continent, the United States, and also Canada. 
uh, and it has to do with postal. So Russell took over as Postmaster General here in the United States, and the Canada Post Office has always been attached to that location. So he took over as the Canada Postmaster General as well, taking command and control of the entire North American continent in the process. Strong, respect the rights of the weak. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. Wrong. He's not talking about weak people as far as this person who's unemployed. He's talking about the weak people, the new world order being so few against the strong, the people of the world who don't want this apparatus to come into play, that, that know what these guys have up their sleeve in the long run. We've read the Bible. We know what it looks like. We know what they want to bring into fruition. We know what's coming. The playbook's in your hands. Everybody's got one. And so when he's saying, we want to protect the weak from the strong and have freedom and peace, he's talking about the freedom to stop the rest of the world from allowing these guys, these guys to make laws freely and in peace so that they can't be stopped by the people. That's the double speak these guys are using and it's very, very nefarious when you listen to it and you realize these guys aren't talking to the American people. They're talking to their bosses behind them. So with that, this entire system that uh, Commander in Chief Russell J. Gould has taken over he's corrected that system and taken it out of their hands because the, uh, the entire international admiralty and maritime law of the sea system, he rewrote all the codes and statutes and laws in relation to that and quantized everything into a mathematical, grammatical fact, disqualifying the old system because it was all grammar fraud. So he's taken tactical command and control of the entire system and taken it away from these guys. Like, like taking matches from a little kid and spanking him on the backside for trying to burn the house down. That's exactly what this guy has done. In relation to uh, a one world global government or a new world order, Commander in Chief Russell J. Gould's system is not that biblical or biblically prophesied one world government, new world order that is going to be so tyrannical that it crushes everyone beneath its foot. He literally stopped that from happening. And because they didn't want to play with him, because of what he had done was so great, um, they, and he had moved so fast, and he only alerted the upper echelons and told the bad guys, hey, I'm taking command and control here. He failed, and a huge oversight on his part was that he failed to tell the non-commissioned officer chain of command in the military what he was doing so people could get behind him and thank him for saving the country from one, a surrender and takeover, and from two, the New World Order apparatuses attempt to conquer the planet. He stopped it right in his tracks, but because he moved so fast and didn't alert the rest of the military, the bad guys kicked him to the side and placed in the Federal, um, the, uh, the Federal Reserve. So the banks moved in, the Federal Reserve Board moved in to the Postmaster General position up in Washington, D.C., and chose the new Postmaster General. And that's all chronicled in the Congressional Record, which is all to be found in the 1999 Government Reformation Act. The government needed to be restructured anyway, because it was the end of the third and final international bankruptcy. But prior to that, we know this was a, a takeover attempt and a surrender attempt back to Great Britain because the Amero was sitting there waiting prior to the end of the third and final international bankruptcy in 1999. They had the Amero set. They were waiting to get the Americans to join the European Union. It was already in place. We were this close to being surrendered, and he stopped it in its tracks. So when that happened, like I said, they didn't want to play ball with him. And as we looked at what was happening there, the P2 Mason Lodges, uh, the Knights of Malta, the Knights of Columbus, uh, and the, uh, the Jesuits were losing their minds. I mean, these, were, these guys were pulling their hair out because Russell J. Gould was not groomed by the P2 Mason Lodges. He's not a Mason. He's not a Knight of Columbus. He's not a Knight of Malta. He's not a Jesuit. He's an American. 
a guy from Wyoming who was smart enough to figure this whole thing out and save the country from being surrendered. So with that, uh, no one wanted to play with them because there was no way to control this guy. There's no way to blackmail this individual. You can't, you can't, you can't pin pedophilia, pedophilia on him. You, you can't pin, uh, you know, racketeering on him. He, he has done nothing but save the nation, set up a whole new construct globally. So because there's no way to blackmail or control this guy, they don't want to let him take over because he doesn't adhere to their standard operating procedures. He doesn't adhere to any other of their beliefs, their belief systems, their belief structure. And they did not want to let him take command, tactical command and control the way he had. So after 12 years of these guys not wanting to play ball and, and just and just move forward in a factual manner in relation to what really took place here on this planet in relation to the United States uh, coming to the end of its third and final international bankruptcy, in relation to the fact that this gentleman captured the flag, in relation to the fact that this gentleman legged into the United Nations, in, in relation to the fact that he was declared a sovereign, and in relation to the fact that he legged back in here uh, at the post office in Washington, D.C., in the United States, taking tactical command and control of the jurisdiction or the District of Columbia and all of the war powers. Um, they didn't want to play ball at that. So he, at that point, mails himself around the world and sets up this entire global construct. It says, okay, well, I'll just go ahead and open the United States up. I'll open my government system back up and in the process, take it all down. And the last thing he did was in 2012, after these guys uh, moved forward for 12 years in an act of fraud, basically is what they did because in reality what happened, they didn't tell the American people, hey, we need a new, con we need a new con banking constitution created. We need a new Senate elected. We need a new Congress elected. We need to resubstantiate how we're going to bring forward a president and what he's going to be in charge of and set the parameters up for that, what he will be in charge of, how the bankruptcy will work if we're even still going to ever have to go through another bankruptcy, but how Russell's banking system worked. The president was to be in charge of that. He would be the administrator of the finances still. So the system for the, the, the system of government for the United States didn't necessarily come to an end. It just needed to be, the, the new system needed to be recognized and it needed to fall, be brought into place. It just needed to be brought forward and we could have kept going forward in a factual, proper manner in relation to what actually happened on planet Earth. But instead, they didn't want to play that and they put in the Federal Reserve in there in Washington, D.C. and they've moved forward the way they have for the last 17 years. So after a 12-year run on December 21, 2012, Commander-in-Chief Russell J. Gould and, and David Windmiller went down and opened up the Benjamin Franklin Post Office in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, when you look at Washington, D.C., you have Admiralty. That is the Admiralty and Maritime Jurisdiction of the Sea because it belonged to the King of Great Britain. And that's how he runs his country, under the Admiralty and Maritime Law of the Sea. Everybody's considered a little boat or a little vessel or a piece of cargo that's presumed missing, dead, or lost at sea. Same thing here in the United States. So that's the Admiralty and Maritime jurisdiction of the sea. So then he goes down to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is the, which is the civil jurisdiction law of the land, and opens up the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania post office, which had been closed down with the start of the American Revolution. And it couldn't be opened back up because they owed 1.6 million francs to the French, so they were in bankruptcy. Bankrupt people can't contract, so they weren't allowed to open up commerce through that post office. So D.C. had to come in and put its post office, I'm sorry, Great Britain had to come in and put its post office in up there. If they didn't, Spain or France was going to do it. So by opening up the Benjamin Franklin post office in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he took the entire government system back down to the original location along with the flag and posted that Title IV flag up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And by doing so, since the birth certificate system ended, he now presents everybody with a claim of life, thereby shipping you out of the land of the dead and back onto the land in the civil jurisdiction, law of the land, where the blood testifies to the life. And with that, reconstitutes the entire American government again in a proper manner 
under the correct Title IV flag using the correct communication parse syntax grammar to establish all of his systems of government on this planet for you to then conduct commerce here in the United States. There are no more laws, rules, and regulations in relation to the old system. They've all been disqualified. No one has ever gone to war over a math problem in the history of mankind, but they've been killing each other over the adverb-verb communication skills of both the religions, the faiths, the political contracts that are written between governments, the political thinking of how governments function, and all the treaties that they write between each other.